Today we are going to answer the question as to why, when, and how you should upgrade your burgage plots to get the most out of them. First thing first, we are going to start out with the first level of the burgage plot, which can hold one family. Now, if you ever build it big enough, it will also be able to hold an extended living quarters to double the amount of families. So that would be two families. And it will be also able to build a backyard extension. Now, in order to get the most out of one burgage plot, you would probably want both. So you would want a backyard extension and an expanded living quarters, which means that in total you could have up to four families in one burgage plot. Now to get there, you would have to get to a level three burgage plot, which would double the amount of families. So if you had one to start out with, it would be two. But if you expanded the living quarters, you would get four families in total for one burgage plot and also an extended backyard. Now, you need 30 burgage plots in order to get to a large town and 15 out of them need to be at least level 3 burgage plots. In order, of course, if you want to get all of the 6 development points and to get to a large town. Now, pretty much what to do with your development points and how to spend them when, once you get all 6 of them, I will have a video on the Manor Lords development tier list here in the top right hand corner and you can check it out. So I have put together two sections of tips after like 500 hours of gameplay. The first is going to be a beginner tips and then the other section is going to be the advanced tips. And for this, I'm going to have timestamps in the description down below. But to start out with the beginner one, uh, you would want to understand first what each of these upgrades do and why you would want to take one rather than the other. So at level one, you get by default the vegetable garden, the chicken coop and the goat shed. If you've taken the perk for apple orchards in the development branch, you would be able to put down the apple orchard. But here's the thing, out of the, the starting ones, I would probably recommend most either the vegetable garden or the chicken coop, depending on what size you're going for for your town and so on. Because the apple orchard is, will be using up a perk point and you could probably spend that perk on much better things, like I said in, uh, in my development tier list. And that's pretty much it. So you would want the chicken coop or the vegetable garden. Now, the goat shed could also work if you have multiple sources of food later down the road and you would want to probably re-specialize your burger plot from chicken coop to goat shed. Uh, mind you that these are the level one, uh, the level one upgrades are pretty much the only ones that you can destroy and pretty much take anything else instead of them, just like these ones. I can uh, showcase that to you real quick. So I can demolish this and take anything else. Uh, and from level 2 onwards, all of these upgrades as of this patch, you won't be able to, uh, to demolish. So you, would have to, so you would have to destroy the entire burgage plot and rebuild it in order to take anything else as an extension. Now, just to go back to uh, the level one uh, upgrades, this has been pretty much uh, my first first hand strategy. I always build chicken coops, then I move uh, to uh, vegetable gardens with newer burger plots, and later on I upgrade. I pretty much re-specialize them into goat sheds, the chicken the chicken coops, the vegetable gardens. I I leave them there. I usually never take apple orchards, but it does depend on what strategy I want to do or if I want to just do farming or like uh, uh, I do uh, just like a relax run in, uh, in Manor Lords. Now, at level two, you're going to unlock a few things to be built. Uh, the bakery does need a perk point as well, like the apple orchard. And it is something that I never, never build myself because in order to get to the bakery, you would need to spend at least two perk points. And I don't think that is worthwhile since bakery takes up the entire family to build bread. Whereas you could have like a chicken coop and you could have one of those families 
uh, from level three from a level three burgage plot or an extended burgage plot uh, or both of those families in a communal oven so one burgage plot would yield eggs and bread as well and that will help you with the market uh, marketplace variety for food whereas if you have just one bakery for a family it's just it's just bread and that's it and once you build it those two families are going to disappear from from your uh, workplace um from uh, your worker uh uh queue and they are going to be dedicated 100 percent on baking uh the same goes with everything else here blacksmith brewery all of the workshops that you can build are going to use up all the families so you would i would advise you usually just to go for one burgage plot with a simple with a simple uh uh uh, house not uh, an expanded one and that's because those families are going to be eaten up by the workshops that you that you create now the blacksmith is probably one of the best upgrades you could have for your village because as of right now iron mining and deep mining is very profitable it is very good you can craft tools spears swords and pole arms so if you have four burgage plots specializing uh every one of uh, uh, every one of them in in one of the free uh weapons uh sorry i meant free burgage plots you can have spears swords and pole arms in the queue i wouldn't advise you to uh, put blacksmith to creating tools because the same way the bakery tools can be made through a smithy and those can be just allocated on, on the fly uh, families you can allocate on the fly so the smithy uh just like the communal oven it is just much better for tools uh the ba the brewery you would always require although in this case as you can see in my town i don't have any breweries i don't have almost anything uh anything regarding uh to workshops because uh this challenge was to do a the smallest village possible while having it a large town so this is probably the smallest large town you could build with most of the things laid within the perimeter of the town so if you want to check out uh the the gameplay for this uh, this was a stream i played uh through this village uh in in one sitting if you want to check it out you can but uh yeah the brewery uh, isn't really needed because the amount of money you would make from uh, blacksmithing and exporting stuff you can just import the ale and send it to the tavern straight up but if you want to really really mean max and you have uh, unlimited space and everything you can uh, probably import the barley uh make malt and then make ale and then just uh pretty much sell the ale in in, in the tavern you don't really want to farm uh usually you don't really want to farm because there are much better things uh much more profitable things to do uh pretty much iron mining and 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 anything else um it's not that it, this does not regard anyone from doing farming or from trying farming or from having a playthrough with farms or farming barley flax wheat is just that some of the things are more profitable than others and you can spend all those families on some of some better things than others and that's just it the tailor is going to give you clothes cloaks and gambesons usually the only thing that you would want the tailor for is the gambesons so uh in that sense and that's just armor and you can you can import the flax uh make it into uh into uh linen and then bob's your uncle <laughs> and that's it uh you make the gambesons and uh there you go uh the cobbler's workshop is worth it worth it if you have lots of goat sheds and um you have like a rich wild animal uh uh deposit because in that case in that case you will have plenty of hides for a tannery and the tannery is going to create leather and you could have one uh burgage plot one level two burgage plot creating uh creating shoes you don't even need a level three one to have two families on it you can just allocate a level two burgage plot to making shoes and that would be pretty much all the cloth requirement and cloth variety you would need for a max level town 
So that's pretty much it. You can just uh, sell them shoes and uh, leather and that's it. Uh, the Jonas Workshop is uh, pretty much the second best in this entire list. So the blacksmith would be the first, the Jonas would be the second. And the reason for that is because you use you use these. Like the wooden parts and the small shield, shield you don't really need, you don't really use, but uh, you usually want to go for spearmen. Uh, as of this patch, I mean, archers have gotten some buff, but they're still not that good. Spearmen are still better. You don't really need uh, uh, pole arms and I mean, um, pikemen. You don't really need pikemen and uh, and and yeah, I mean. You could you you can win the game with just a full roster of spear militia that has a uh, uh, full helmet, a uh, full chainmail, and a fully upgraded retinue. And for that, the only thing you want to to uh, produce actively and then export could be shields. Now you could always put down the same way with the blacksmith. You could always put down free burgage plots. Uh, for all three of them so you would export wooden parts uh, small shields and uh, large shields as well and uh, but for that you would uh, require uh, multiple uh, sawmills because these all use up planks and the blacksmith does use planks for uh, for the weapons as well so just keep that in mind and then moving on to the armorer's workshop uh, here's the thing it's not mandatory but uh the armor's workshop provides you with helmets mail chain mail armor and plain plate armor now usually i only go for uh helmets uh when i uh when i want to min max things but uh, other than that if you don't have the perks spent in the development branch so you don't have the basic armor making the advanced and the master uh, armor making you don't really need the armor's workshop and it is going to be disabled anyway uh, for this playthrough, I had the Armorer's Workshop, as you can see, uh, for just for the helmets, so that I would have them ready for my militia, uh, and then export the surplus of helmets. And then finally, you have the Fletcher's Workshop. And uh, the Fletcher's Workshop is one of the most useless upgrades. So if I would have a tier list even for uh, Burgage Plot upgrades, this would be at the bottom of the tier because you don't really need bows and a bows are going to use up planks which can be better spent on wooden parts small shields large shields and for the blacksmith wor workshop as the blacksmith is going to need planks anyway for spears uh, swords and pole arms so you would rather want to export these rather than bows and that's pretty much it for burgage plot uh backyard extensions so uh pretty much uh the most important uh would be uh in long story short blacksmith joiner shop is a top tier then you would uh then you would have vegetable garden chicken coop for uh, at the beginning of the game you would have pretty much later a uh, mid tier would be a uh, mid tier would be the goat shed you would have um you would have the at the bottom of the tier you would have the apple orchard the, the fletcher's workshop the bakery extension and uh, uh also the brewery can be a mid-tier one uh the tailor's workshop can be okay if you do farming and you uh have plenty of linen uh you should have the gambesons and then you could export gambesons um the cobbler's workshop is pretty much mid to low tier because uh, although you can make shoes you don't really need that you can just import a very small amount of clothing or shoes and that would pretty much suffice for the entirety of the market because as you can see if i if i click on uh, on the market uh, on the marketplace here i have a hundred percent uh coverage from 36 leather and 36 shoes it is very very easy it's it is clothing is the the easiest to uh to supply on the market second second uh, easiest is the fuel and then the, usually most of the people have problems with the food variety but moving on to the advanced tips depending on what difficulty you play the game at 
there's going to be different strategies as to when to upgrade your burgage plots to level two and level three and when not to and when to have double duplex uh burgage plots or single uh burgage plots so first of all if you have a medium difficulty uh you would probably want to uh prioritize uh, leveling up your burgage plots to level 3 so the early game you would probably go for level 1 to level 2 and then mid game you could all already start upgrading to level 3 to get more and more people joining your town and depending on what size of town you're going for and so on um, from a, for a medium difficulty, so this uh, playthrough has been done on a medium difficulty on restoring the peace. So enemy enemy AI was present, and so on. And we tried to do the smallest large town uh, possible. And I've upgraded all the burgage plots into level three, and also all of them have expanded living quarters, minus a few of them. And here is where some things come into play. Now, most of your artisans, uh, so most of the people that have uh, that do my, uh, blacksmithing or cobbler's workshop, if you'd make a, a four-family burgage plot, you wouldn't really want to spend four families on one house on one blacksmith, because the moment you you craft the, the blacksmith all of those four families are going to be allocated to the blacksmith so for that what you would want is if you want to min max you would probably go for a level two uh burgage plot with one family in it and a and make it into a blacksmith or if you want all of your burgage plots to be level three it would be two families that would be allocated to the blacksmith now uh the reason why uh, why you would still want to have duplex burgage plots with four families in them is that this is simple. If you don't upgrade them into a workshop and you leave them uh, with the with the ba base extensions of vegetable garden, chicken coop, or goat shed, it won't it won't occupy it it won't become an occupation for your uh, villagers so you would still have access to all four of the families while still ha getting the chicken coop out of them so in my case i upgraded all of my burgage plots to level four with the expanded uh, living quarters and that provided me four families and also i had the chicken coop now the reason why you would want double living quarters uh instead of uh single ones is this every burgage plot has a set amount of requirement that it uh that it needs uh, that it has as a demand for the marketplace so when you have four families in one burgage plot it is going to have a less not necessarily less food variety but it is going to need less supply to meet their demands so the variety is going to be the same but the supply that is, is that is required is going to be less so in that case you would probably want four families uh four families in one burgage plot rather than one family in one work in one burgage plot and that is going to help you with food variety clothing and fuel as you can see this entire town is level three and I don't even have that many uh, stalls installed and I have 100% food variety and that's because most of these are four families in one residential spot and that lowers the amount of uh, uh, supply they need for their demands. So that is, a, that is a very important thing to keep in mind. That is one reason why you would want four families in one burgage plot. Another one is game optimization. So the larger you go with the town, if you have like a thousand or if you want to have 2000 people, uh, 2000 people in your uh, uh, in your gameplay, you might have seen that after like a thousand game starts to break down. Now I have tested this and if and when I did a playthrough with 1,000 
uh, not not 1000 1000 villagers that had only single uh single uh, family burgish plots it was much harder on the game's engine rather than having you guessed it right double burgage plots double burgage plots for some reason are much easier on the game's engine probably because the villagers share uh, the same uh the same routes they take usually the the routes they take they are pretty much the same depending on which burgage plot uh they are assigned to so uh the pathfinding right the pathfinding the game has to calculate it is going to be the same for up to 12 people in one burgage plot right because four families are going to be 12 people so if you have one pathfinding for one family for four families that is one pathfinding for 12 people whereas if you have only one family in one burgage plot that is going to be you guessed it right you are going to have to calculate one pathfinding for three people and you are going to have to calculate for four different burgage plots for different pathfindings so that is heavy on the game engine and i have tested this and i have uh i have um and i can showcase it to you and uh let's just do that all right as you can see here this uh village has 2075 people and i didn't run into a crash yet uh when i did single burgage uh single family burgage plots the problem was that at around 1200 or 1300 uh, people i would start getting crashes i would have lots of issues it's not that right now we don't have people that are going to be frozen here and there uh which is pretty much a common uh a common issue uh at a thousand plus uh, villager uh gameplays but as you can see here we have a 100 percent uh food coverage which i did not get with uh single burgage plot uh, <laughs> with single burgage plot um, families or single family per burgage plot uh and that's where scaling helps a lot when you take two families into uh into every burgage plot so uh the scaling is much better and the marketplace uh, marketplace coverage and market coverage overall is much easier when you get uh when you get um two because every burgage plot is going to need only one supply of food instead of two or one supply of food instead of four if you have a, a tier uh if you have a tier uh, free burgage plot so uh that said this has been tested and as you can see everything is running smoothly uh the consumption is much lower and so on but of course you would say yeah but i don't really want to make that big of a town how do i optimize my burgage plots then all right well let's switch to one of the smallest villages i did so this is one of the smallest villages i have built as of yet and as you can see we only have 10 burgage plots here so uh these are all expanded living quarters burgage plots and one of the strategies i had for this is early game early game when i needed when i needed the uh, uh, the militia to be uh kitted and uh, to have uh to win against uh, the barbarians uh, what I did is I dedicated two of the burgage plots to do shields and spears and later on I actually demolished them and I rebuilt them to have access to the families. So right now we have 42 working families out of which every burgage plot uh, is has only chicken coops and the rest of the things that we require we either trade for on the market or I have a smithy in order to uh, make the most out of my iron deposit so on to the more hardcore strategies so that was the strategy for like a default difficulty a medium difficulty gameplay now let's think about how you would do something that is hardcore you're doing a challenging run and you want to max uh everything in order to have high approval rating and uh 
have your village grow and so on and so forth so if you're doing a challenging or a hardcore run these are some of the things that i would keep in mind uh first of all uh i'm going to showcase that later on how i did myself but uh the rule of thumb is that uh you want to get uh all of your perk points asap or most of the cases you wouldn't even do all of the perk points you would probably go for three to four perk, perk points uh, or a max of five and that's because i wouldn't i honestly wouldn't upgrade more than 10 burgage plots to level three because of uh how much approval rating you would tank in your village as for me the best strategy is to have expanded living quarters uh level one burgage plots for my the entirety almost the entirety of my village and let me show you why so uh although this is a hardcore uh playthrough i haven't really focused on having the biggest village more rather i focused having the most amount of regional wealth i could gather and for that i made three deep mines and i pretty much built out the entire village with level one burgage plots and here's the reason why in order to get to medium town i used only 10 10 level three burgage plots i turned them into blacksmiths and joiner shops to be able to export as many things as possible but that's <laughs> but that's of course not the reason why we're here the reason why we're here is to showcase to you that you can have a large approval rating even if you don't satisfy your high class citizens um, and that's because as a, as you can see i have zero i have zero uh coverage for barley uh for ale sorry uh the ale is at zero i do not import i do not make ale yet i'm doing a hardcore run and i still have a really good uh, approval rating and that's because i am banking up on my level one burgage plots for which i have satisfied all the needs people would want and with that strategy you can build whatever size city you want in a hardcore or challenging run and you can also make huge amounts of money you don't need farming although i put down apple orchards the reason i put down the apple orchards is just to have some variety as i was trying to make the most amount of money in the least amount of time possible um and that uh, that strategy is just revolving around uh this playthrough was just revolving around making the most uh the most money possible in the least amount of time uh but other than that uh as you can see what we are trading most of the time is uh most of the weapons we are trading most of the the uh, the commodities uh, such as tools um we have leather wooden parts uh we have the shields the join from the joiner shop and everything and i'm also exporting huge amounts of uh, uh of coal and uh yeah this uh it can work guys it can work with all with all the discussions we had on stream in comments on a lot of the videos it can work if you have a very good strategy this of course does not disregard any other strategies that you guys might have such as uh farming uh wheat farming rye farming barley farming and exporting ale and and so on and so forth it's just one way of doing things and it is i think probably the top tier uh thing since uh iron mining and deep mining is uh, so good but all in all but all in all uh this was the why when and how to upgrade your burgage plots to get the most out of them no matter what game strategy or playthrough you're doing i hope you enjoyed it i am very curious to see what you guys have strategies what strategies you use in order to get your villages uh to a very high to a very high level to get uh lots of uh lots of income or what you guys use to have your market variety uh or what do you do in order to level up your village to the max level i'm very curious i'm always open to read and reply to your comments 
Thank you guys for joining in. If you enjoyed what you saw and you like my content, you can always consider becoming a member or subscribing, staying tuned to more Manor Lords and similar content. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like. Bye.